Welcome back! We are here to rock some tree diagrams tonight, along with a few other little topics. So let's go ahead and dive right in. You are selling sweatshirts for a fundraiser for Hamburg High School. There are three choices you have to make. First, you need to decide whether you would prefer a crew neck or hooded sweatshirt. After that, you need to determine whether you're a small, medium, or large in size. And thirdly, would you like a purple or a white sweatshirt? Now, I think this is something we can all relate to. Hopefully, you've had to make a decision in your life and um, perhaps even, you know, choosing a sweatshirt for school. So to go ahead and get started, we're going to list out all of our outcomes. And to do this, we're going to make what we call a tree diagram. Now, this is just a visual representation of all the possible outcomes we could get here. So you probably did make these back freshman year in Algebra 1, but we're going to do them again today. Hopefully a nice little review. So to start your tree diagram off, we just start with a nice little dot off to the side here. And the first thing we're going to, I'm going to list up at the top, is the type of sweatshirt you're going to choose. Basically you have two options. You can go with root 1 here, option 1, and you can choose the crew neck. Now perhaps you're not a fan and you, you like the hoodies a little better, so that would be your second option. I'm going to stem that down this way. Alright, so you've got the crew neck versus the hoodie. Now we're not done there. We've got to pick a size. Oops. So again, at the top, I'm just going to write the word size and I'm going to kind of under, or write these underneath it. So if I choose the crew neck here, I've got a few options. I can now determine if I'm a small or a medium, or even a large. And I have those same options if I chose a hoodie. I still have to determine whether I want a small, a medium, or a large. So notice I'm just listing out my possibilities. All right, only one decision left to make, and that would be the color of your hoodie. So if you picked a small hoodie, you still have the option to get a purple or a white hoodie. If you pick the medium hoodie, you still have the option for purple or white. And even if you pick large, you still get the option of purple or white. And I'm going to stem each of those below as well. Purple or white, purple or white, purple or white. And that's it. That's my whole tree diagram. Now I'm going to go one step further, and in this last little section, I'm going to list some outcomes. And I'm going to take the time and I'm going to list every possible outcome that you could have purchased yourself. And it's very simple. I'm just going to read straight across the tree. So just follow me from the stem here. I'm first going to take my crew neck route. And from there I could get a small and I could choose purple. So I'm going to say that's a crew neck, small, purple. Now I could do something pretty similar. I could go crew neck, small, but now I could pick white. So crew neck, small, white. Or I could go crew neck medium, and I could pick purple, or crew neck medium and white. So crew medium purple, crew medium white. And you've probably guessed it by now, I could go crew large and purple, or crew large and white. So take a few seconds and film the same idea for the hoodies there. You could get your hoodie in small with purple, or the hoodie in a small size in white. Now, what this last row of outcomes is going to tell me, I'm just going to bracket it in here, this is the total amount of possibilities that you had. You had 12 different possibilities to choose from. Now, if I wanted to get to that number 12 a lot quicker, there's actually a little method or formula I could have used. I'm going to scroll down here. Basically, I just had to ask myself, well, how many types were there to choose from? Well, we had the crew neck or hoodie, so that's two types. And then I had to choose a size, so there was small, medium, and large, that's three types. And lastly, I had to choose the color, and we had two types, either purple or white, so I'm going to put a two there. And you'll notice, if you just take those three numbers and multiply, you actually get 12. And that's probably a lot quicker than making a tree diagram every time. Um, so just you know, watch the question. If it just says how many, we've got this nice little method. If it wants you to list them, then you would make the tree diagram. Now this actually has a name. This is called the counting principle. And what the counting principle says, if you have m ways to do something and n ways to do another thing, 
To find your total, you just take your m and you multiply it by your n. Now you certainly could have 10 different events, and again, you're just going to multiply all of them together. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example. All right, Maddie is packing for a trip. She has three pairs of jeans, five shirts, two pairs of shoes. How many different outfits are possible? So we could sit here and draw a tree diagram out to represent all of this, or we could use that fundamental counting principle. And remember, that just said take all your possibilities and multiply. Okay, so let's just run through that again. She has three pairs of jeans. So under jeans, I'm going to say three. She has five shirts, and she has two pairs of shoes. And remember, that counting principle just says multiply. So I basically have three times five times two for a total of 30 different possible outfits. Now, if I wanted to know what exactly all 30 were, I could make the tree diagram and list them all out. But if I just want to know how many, the fundamental counting principle will get the job done. All right, our next little mini topic is on the word factorials. Now, again, it may sound familiar, may not. Let me show you the symbol for, for factorial. And basically, it's an exclamation point. But it means a little more than just exclamation point here in mathematics. For example, if I said five factorial, what I'm telling you to do is to start with the number 5, because I said 5 factorial, and basically you're going to subtract 1 and multiply all these answers together. So I'm going to say that's really 5 times, subtract 1 gives me 4, times if I take 1 away is 3, times 2, times 1. And now you stop when you get to 1. If you multiplied by 0, then every answer would be 0. So again, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And I can type that in the calculator and get a nice answer of 120. Uh, let's try another one. If I said 2 factorial times 4 factorial. All right, so let's start with 2 factorial. 2 factorial is telling me 2 times 1. And 4 factorial is telling me 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And it wants me to take my 2 factorial and multiply it by my 4 factorial. So basically, I'm just multiplying all of these numbers together. So 2 times 1 is 2, three, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24, for a total of 48. Now, I mean, that great calculator that you have can do all of this. So just to be clear, and let's probably jot this down so we, we know where it is here, on the calculator, if you hit that math button, and now you'll have to arrow over to probability, and it's, I believe it's abbreviated PRB for probability. And if you scroll down, I believe it's number four, you'll see the factorial. So take a look at it on your calculator. Again, it's math arrow over to probability and you'll find the factorial. So you will have to type the number on your screen first. For example, you'll have to hit 4, then you'll go to math, probability, and you can find the factorial. Now here's a pretty common question, and those of you with the updated calculator, you're in luck. It's, it's hard to screw this one up. With that old calculator, you've got to be really, really careful. If I give you 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial. All right, so again, those of you with that updated calculator, if you hit your alpha y equals, you get that nice fraction button, and you can just type this in, and you're golden. You know, type your 7 factorial, arrow down, and you're good to go. Those of you with the older calculator, the non-updated calculator, I want to be very clear. On paper, you can type in your 7 factorial, and I believe you get 5040. Oh, oh. And then you're going to have to type in your bottom separately. Just type in 3 factorial times 2 factorial, you should get 12. And lastly, I would divide those terms. And you'll get the nice 420. Okay, so again, on the new calculator, you're golden. You have that amazing um, fraction button. You have no idea how lucky you are. The old calculator, you've got to be pretty careful. You're going to have to do the top write it on paper, do the bottom, write it on paper, divide and get your answer. But I would say this is pretty common, so let's be real careful uh, that we, we either use the fraction button or we take our time with those. 
All right, here's our last little section for the night. The, the next common question is, how many different letter arrangements can be made from the word? And they'll give you a word here. Now, here's the rule we want to use. On top, it's the number of letters factorial divided by the number of repeats. factorial. And there might be more than one number that repeats, so you could put it on there again. So let me run through a couple examples for you. Number one. Jacket. Alright, so how many different arrangements can I make of the word jacket? Well, it's the number of letters total. So one, two, three, four, five, six factorial, divided by any amount of letters that repeat. Well, does anything repeat here? Nope. So I'm going to say that's zero factorial. So again, if you've got the updated calculator, use that fraction button. If you don't, we're going to do each one separately. So 6 factorial is 720, divided by 0 factorial is 1. So my final answer is 720. All right, let's try another one. Number two, sports. All right, so count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six letters, that's six factorial, divided by any letters that repeat. Well, I would definitely say the S repeats, and I see exactly two of them. So I'm going to divide that by two factorial. And know if the other letters repeat. So again, if you've got the updated calculator, that's awesome. If not, 6 factorial on your calculator, so that's 720, divided by 2 factorial, 2 times 1 is 2, for a total of 360. One final one for you here, number 3. Oopsie. Uh, let's go with reverses. Alright, so remember, total amount of letters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, count them out, factorial, divided by the number of letters that repeat. So take a minute and go ahead and circle the ones that repeat. Uh, looks like I've got 1, 2, 3 E's, and 2 S's. So I have a lot of repeats in the word reverses. So I'm going to start with the blue ones. I see two R's, so that's a two factorial I'm going to divide out. I see three E's, and I put them in orange. That's three factorial. And then it looks like I have uh, two S's. Those are in green, so another two factorial. Okay, now notice everything's getting multiplied here. So again, updated calculator, your golden old TI-83 calculator. Carefully type in eight factorial on top. And that should get us, hopefully you're doing it on your own here, I've got 40,320. Now I'm typing all of this on one line in my calculator. Okay, so I'm hitting 2 factorial times 3 factorial times 2 factorial. Alright, we're typing all that in on one line. And I get 24. And my last step, of course, is just to divide those two for a total of 16 80. And there you have it. Um, we covered three topics here that are a review from Algebra 1, but if they feel new to you, that's okay. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.